Do you ever dream of playing like a tennis pro? But you end up on the tennis court looking like a tennis Joe Schmo. In your mind, you think your forehand looks like this. But in reality, it looks more like this. Don't let bad tennis happen to you. And don't worry, because Crunch Time Coaching is releasing a 10-part series called The Complete Tennis Player, where we teach you in order, one skill at a time, how to go from being a tennis zero to a tennis hero. Okay, that's really cheesy, but you want to be great at tennis, right? Let's get started. Welcome guys, we're excited that you're joining us for a free train series here on YouTube where we're going to train you how to become a complete tennis player. So if you're tired of playing like a tennis smo, maybe you want to play more like a tennis pro, make sure you pay attention because we're going to show you step by step in the exact order what you need to do to become a complete tennis player. If you guys are new to Crunch Time Coaching, maybe you've never seen us before, we're going to be your best friend if you're a tennis player. We're going to be a tennis player's ultimate resource, so make sure you hit the subscribe button below hit the little bell next to it so you get notifications. You don't want to miss any of our free training, especially this 10-part series. Yeah, and stick around to the end of the video too because we're going to be giving you bonus training, a no-fail drill you can do to really master the contact points. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. All right, sounds good. Let's get started. Building the perfect game, guys, can be really confusing, especially if you don't know where to start. There's so many videos out there on YouTube, Matt, so right. people are just kind of mixing and matching. Uh, so where are we going to start today? Well, we're actually going to start with probably the most important skill in tennis. And we're going to use three of the greatest players of all time to model this for you guys in this lesson. The contact point. Contact point is super important for two main reasons. Reason number one, and our friend in Cincinnati, Steve Katari, pointed out. Most interesting man alive. Most interesting man alive. He pointed out that the contact point, you have a good contact point, that's actually your biggest power source. Because if you can hit the ball right in the middle of the strings, that's where you're going to hit the ball really clean and really hard. So right. you add power by having a good contact point. The what other, else does it do? Well, the other thing is, reason number two, is it's going to eliminate erratic on forced errors when you have a good contact point. I think that's reason number one that so many people miss shots is that they're not aware of where the racket head is, how it's approaching the ball, and if it's a little off. Yeah, the, the tiniest variation, the just tini a little bit open like that, oh, you might have just hit it over the fence. You can send it into the fence. A little bit too much closed, you're gonna put it in the bottom of the net. Exactly. So let's bring out our first legend of the day and our first tip of the day. That's right, Jimmy Connors, okay? Jimmy We're gonna Connors. use Jimmy Connors as our model, Matt, because Jimmy Connors may be the most pure ball striker of all time, and he could hit the ball so hard, not because of how hard he was swinging, but because of how clean he hit the ball. Well, I mean, look at the racket he was using, that uh, T2000. Yeah, the T2000. He was using that T2000. For a long... Didn't he use it in the 90s still? He might have switched by then, <laughs> but he had it a long time. He was using it basically when everybody else was switching to aluminum rackets and oversized rackets, more modern rackets or more modern today, but he was still using that T2000 and crushing most of the competition with it. Try playing with that piece of garbage in your next league match. <laughs> So the thing that we want to take away from Jimmy Connors is simple and efficient preparation. I mean, Jimmy wasted no energy. He just took it straight back and put it straight through the ball with perfect contact along the way. All right, so our first tip is the set it and forget it preparation. Your preparation is so important to be able to have a nice, simple approach to the ball. Jimmy Connors is really good at that. He was here and he would go into unit turns. This is a little more old school, so if you have like a continental or eastern grip or a weak eastern grip, not an aggressive eastern grip like Federer, you probably have your racket tip pointing straight ahead like Jimmy did. And then Jimmy was pretty much done at this point. All he did then, rather than most people thinking bringing the arm back, and you can see by doing that the racket's on the other side of my body, Jimmy just did a nice unit turn. So once he's here, 
He's actually in hitting position. All he had to do then was just pivot his legs and then he would come through the ball. I'll demo a couple old school and then show you if you want to go a little more modern on how to do it. But this is the preparation. I'm here and then all I'm doing is turning and coming. Then I can get a nice contact point. Turn, hit through the ball. And it's real easy when we go like this to have really clean contact. I was going to say, Pete, you like to think about it more as uh, the hips, the shoulders, the legs. What's the best way for someone who maybe has never heard the words unit and turn put together? Actually, what's interesting is, sure, all that, but what I'm mostly thinking about is my foot. I'm thinking about my foot being relaxed enough to shuffle and slide and just move like this. So if you're doing that, everything like your hip is going to come into play. So it's more just thinking about letting those toes point out to the side fence. And then I haven't moved my arms at all, but it looks like I have. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Now, next is if you want to go a little more modern, a semi Western grip, you'll notice that the pros are still doing that set it and forget it, even though it looks like they're swinging so much harder and bigger, they're actually being more efficient with their move. And so now I'm in a semi Western grip, and rather than my racket tip being this way, it's more facing Matt and my opponent, and I have it flipped up a little bit. See that? I have it flexed up. So that's gonna build in a natural loop. So if I come here, now I gotta do again is just turn. I like to think of this mirror, mirror, because now I can kind of see myself there and then looking to make clean contact. So we'll just do a couple of those. So I'm here, turn, and then up and through. And we notice when we're doing this, we're adding a little more natural topspin to the ball, but it's still nice and clean contact. Beautiful. So our next vital skill for building awesome contact point, Matt, it's is a simple one. It's a simple one. It sounds easy, but it's very few players do it well, and that is watching the ball. And all three of our legends that we're using today, they have such great eye focus, but perhaps the best ever, I'm going to let Matt take over because I know he's just like, oh, I got to say it. It's, Who is it? It's the guy in my hat, Roger Federer. Of course. Federer. -er. Probably Federer. -er. It's probably the greatest at doing this ever. He's the greatest at doing this ever. Would you agree? Yeah, because one of the things that stood out when he did it, and, yeah. and people even, I remember when slow motion When video, he does it, yeah. when he does it this week. That's right, when he does coming it. Coming up in a couple days. If I remember a long time ago, Matt, I'm even talking in the 90s, oh, okay. when Tennis One first came out with slow motion video, everybody would marvel at how Roger would hit a ball and his head would stay down long after the ball was gone. And why are people so impressed by this? Well, I think it's kind of the old classic bad golf syndrome to where, you know, you want to see the results so soon and Roger just trusted his shot more than most people. Yeah, you hit a shot, you want to look, look up before you even hit the ball. And you look up before you even hit the ball. And, and a lot of people, even though they don't realize that, they're pulling off the ball too early. Yeah. So we have a couple of pretty cool drills for that. So we could say it messes up your contact point. That's totally mess up the contact, contact point. point. So we've got a couple of cool drills to help you play more like Roger. Let's get into it. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. I just, I think it's important to point out that like, even if you work on this, I've seen a lot of people, they work on this and they might get it going, but it's so hard to make it a habit that you keep with you every time you step on a tennis court and hit every single ball. I think that's really what makes it so impressive about Roger Federer, because he does it on literally like 100% all the balls he hits. Yeah, okay. We love Roger, Matt. We get it. Let's get into some drills. All right. So a great drill actually learned as a junior, it's actually already a pretty good junior, 14, 15 years old really simple was when we were warmed up and the ball is going to bounce, we'd say to ourselves, bounce, and we're going to hit it, we'd say hit. Now this helps us get our eyes focused on the ball, gets us into a rhythm, and we're just playing some great tennis right away. So here it comes, when I see the ball, I'm going to say bounce and hit. Here we go, so it's bounce, hit. On the toes, see it come, bounce, hit. And it's doing a couple of great things. Number one, it's helping me focus on the ball right away. It's getting me into a rhythm to where I'm focused and I don't have to think. Now that is huge for tennis. Matt's gonna come right back and we're gonna go through a drill we call picture perfect, where we're gonna get that picture perfect, head down, follow through like Roger Federer. All right, this next drill is called picture perfect. Now Roger Federer, Matt, he's a picture perfect tennis player, isn't he? Sure is. <laughs> and this is one of the drills we love to do with the kids to get them hitting the ball cleanly, great contact, and looking picture perfect. Uh, when we're playing, we tend to do just too much with our body, get too energized. What we want to do here is actually slow things down, Matt, 
and you're going to watch the ball. You're not even going to look to see where it goes. And after you're done, you have to hold your finish for three seconds. Your head is right where the ball went, and your balance is perfect. You ready? Yeah. So this is going to be a good way to, to train the body to do this stuff in real time in a match. That's right. One of our best players, Caleb, mm -hmm. he actually demoed for the younger kids this week. And he hadn't done that drill in years. And he's got picture perfect strokes when he's playing real tennis. Yeah, he always looks good. But we did that drill and he was picture perfect. So here we go. So here comes Matt. He's coming with a picture perfect step and hold. Very good. Next time what he's going to do, he's going to focus on keeping that back toe back and just turning it into the ball. There he goes. Ready? Hold one, two, three. Notice Matt is looking forward at the shot. Yeah, big mistake. Sure, right here we go. So keep your eye right where you're hitting the ball. Looks like your buddy Roger. One, two, three. Now that was picture perfect. Let's do that again. Ready? One, two, three. Awesome, Matt. Last time. One, two, three, Matt, that looked amazing. All right, let's do it again. One, two, three, good. Next time, bend a little sooner into the ball. Start bending forward. One, two, three, nice. Last one. So there you go guys, there's picture perfect. It works like a charm every time. Cleans up your form right away if you feel like you're getting a little sloppy. I think every player should come back to this. All right, yeah, and it's a good little balance drill too. All right, our final important tip until we get into our bonus tips, Matt. Bonus tips? Yeah, we got bonus tips at the end. Don't forget guys. Uh, but it is focusing on the hitting zone length. That's gonna, when you can really get a great long time with the ball, Lengthen out the hitting zone, you're gonna make awesome contact with the shot. And one of the best legends of this was Andre, Andre Agassi. That's where uh, we got this tip from. This is an Agassi tip. He said his coaches would have him spend a lot of time when he was practicing, focusing on the six inches before contact, contact, and then staying there like you're still with the ball for another six inches. So we're gonna have Pete demo this. Nice. I'm staying behind the ball, and as I'm hitting, I'm just focused on the six inches before, six inches after. That's usually going to give me a nice deep ball into the court as well. Those are going right back in the corner. That's what Agassi was famous for. And if we could kind of slow mo it for him, just so you could see it. As he swings towards it, six inches, six inches. The great drill that I have for you that we want to leave you with is the triangle finish, Matt. And so the triangle finish really helps people who maybe they're watching TV and they're seeing all these cool follow throughs over here and they have a very short hitting zone. For those types of people, I usually go into the triangle finish drill, which is gonna have you, it will have you naturally flatten out the ball more and lengthen the hitting zone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna swing and then when we're done, we're making a triangle from our chest up to our finish point right here. So we'll be pointing that fence. So watch this triangle finish as Matt feeds me a couple. It's a great drill to do. So lengthen out that hitting zone. We're reaching right for our contact point through it. Triangle finish, hold. Always like that picture perfect when you're exercising. Triangle finish. Nice. Okay guys, if you like this video, you're gonna love what we have for you next. That's right, we've got, well first we've got some bonus training for you guys on the contact point. We've got two no-fail drills that are gonna help you find nice, sweet, perfect contact out front in the middle of the strings every swing. That's how valuable how, is that? That's how you find the effortless power, Matt. That's right. And next, what we have for you is our preview of the next video, which we're gonna be coming back with consistency, developing the ultimate rally ball. Now, the ultimate rally ball, to me, Matt, is a shot that it's impossible to be attacked. And it's almost impossible for you to miss it if you really develop this rally ball. That's right, you should be able to make this like 100 times in a row. It's impossible to attack. Our models that we're gonna be using for this, pretty good ones, Rafael Nadal, 
and Novak Djokovic. Yeah, they've got a pretty good rally ball, you could say. And finally, before you leave, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video that's coming up. Plus, we want you to join the conversation. By joining the conversation, you're gonna be entered into a raffle to win a free tennis racket if you can comment on every single video. And what we wanna know right now is what's the best tip you've ever heard when it comes to helping you create consistent contact. That's right, there's, there's a whole lot of different ways to try to master your contact point. So comment below and let us know the best tip you've ever heard. And uh, I don't think they can use any of the ones we did today, right? Well, no, you can't use those, but find some other ones. Some similar ones are good. That's gonna help our community. Just maybe maybe something will click. You never know what's gonna click with somebody. And we'll, we'll learn from it too, probably. So right. really cool. We're always just one tip away from finding that magic feeling and perfecting the shot. That's right. We'll be back on the next video, guys. Look out for video number two in a couple of days.